In this video, I interview Pylin from Pylin's Kitchen, and we talk about how uploading less videos could lead to more growth on your channel, while imperfections are sometimes the most needed thing to connect with your audience, and her advice on brand deals. Coming up. This video is brought to you by vidIQ, the number one Chrome extension for YouTubers looking for on-point data analysis, research resources, and enhanced video creator tools. Start getting more views in less time today by signing up for free at vidIQ.com slash influence. That's vidIQ.com slash influence influence. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Video Influencers, helping you build your influence income and impact with online video. And we're here at Clamor 18 and I'm talking to Pylin from Pylin's Kitchen. How's it going? It's going very well. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And thank you so much for being on our channel. Super inspired to talk to you. You recently crossed half a million subscribers. Plus, you are really kind of the leading influencer in a small niche, which is very powerful, mm -hmm. uh, doing Thai cooking um, and English speaking. Yes. Right? So super powerful. We're putting out weekly cooking videos. Um, you have a book out. We're going to talk about how YouTube can lead to other things. But let's take it back. Mm -hmm. Tell people a little bit about who you are and your start getting into all of this. So I started my channel in 2009. I was going to culinary school at the time. So I'd always loved cooking ever since I was a kid. It's been a passion. But more than that, I'd always wanted a cooking show. I watched Jamie Oliver, I watched Nigella Lawson. I just remember thinking, that's exactly what I want to do. But like, how do you get on TV? Like, there's, like, how do you do that? Where do you apply, right? You can't. So then I just thought, you know what, I'll just become a chef. But then when YouTube came along, all of a sudden, a light bulb went off. It's like, wait a minute. Now I can just have my own cooking show. I don't need to be discovered. I can make this happen for myself. And so I did. That is super cool and super inspiring, right? Because we're living in this age where mm -hmm. you don't need to go on TV. In fact, in a lot of cases, it's almost more powerful yes, absolutely. to just step out on a digital channel and build your own thing. However, how'd you do it? I mean, there's a lot to do. Like it, it, the cooking show, Jamie Oliver's got a production manager. He's got videographers and everybody helping him. You've done this all kind of from scratch on your yep. own. Take us through how you learned this stuff, how you got started and some of those beginnings. Everything was self-taught. And in the beginning, I was so excited about putting out content that I cared not one bit about quality. I just wanted to put out a video point and shoot camera that we had. I had my brother said, can you be my cameraman? He said, sure. And I just went and he just followed me with a little point and shoot 480p. It looked terrible. But the content was good because the passion was there. And little by little, I improved. Little by little, okay, somebody suggested maybe you should get a microphone. I got a microphone. Maybe we should get two cameras. So I got two cameras. Maybe we upgrade the cameras. Okay, we upgrade the cameras. So just really little, little by little. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then you also edit your own videos. I edit my own video. I teach myself all the stuff that I need to do. So what did you start on and how are you editing today? What do you use? I started on Windows Movie Maker whatever the free program that yeah. came with. Like, that's all you needed, right? Um, and then I start, moved into iMovie. And then now I use Final Cut Pro. And I just used lynda.com to teach myself all of that stuff. Yeah. Super smart. And lynda.com is a great resource. We'll link that in the description below. If you want to learn something like editing. Yeah, you can there's even do so many resources out there. There's no excuse why now you don't know how to do anything. Learn it. That's true. Go mm -hmm. to the internet. Teach yourself. That's super powerful mm -hmm. and inspiring that you stepped out to do that. And so you launched out. You started with this little point and shoot camera. But eventually things began to grow. What, what are some of the things that led to growth and tips that you have about that? Very clearly, it was consistency in putting out content. Because in the beginning, I just I did it because I loved it, because it was fun. So I did it whenever I, ha whenever I had time. And when you work in the restaurant industry, you don't have a lot of time. So it wasn't very frequent. But then there came a point where I thought about, you know, maybe this has legs. Maybe this has potential. What if I try to be a little more consistent? So I started doing once every two weeks. So then it started growing. And then eventually when I did once a week, it just absolutely skyrocketed. I mean, it was the most obvious uh, change that led to growth. 
That's powerful. And it's interesting about once a week. It's funny. You were doing more than once a week, but you went back. I mean, you were doing yeah. two. You went back to once a week. But off camera, we were talking about how much effort you put in mm -hmm. to one video. And I think that's something that a lot of people can't see. You test out your recipes. Yeah. You, multiple times. Multiple times. Three or four might fail. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a pressure in today's kind of YouTube economy to be putting out content so fast that it's rushed. Yes. That the quality is compromised. Yeah. Would you say that that intentionality to put out like one super high quality video a week has been powerful and what are your feelings about quality? I think quality is everything. For example, I test my recipes multiple times. I make sure if I tell you one teaspoon of sugar, I mean one teaspoon of sugar. I don't estimate because if people follow and then it doesn't work, they're not coming back for your video. They know that your things don't work. Mm. I have people who make my recipes over and over again and then they buy my cookbook because they know that if I follow Pi's video, it will work and it will taste good. And it's super important. It's, yeah. it's building trust with your audience, right? Especially when you're doing how-tos. People are coming to you to learn something. So your thing better work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no, that's really amazing. And influencers, I want to encourage you. I think there's so much pressure, pressure right now where everyone's saying post more, post more, post more. And really breakthrough could be posting less better better like putting out that higher quality content putting more effort into it that's super powerful and what's amazing is again from this desire to have a show not knowing how to even have a show you start a youtube channel but it led to other opportunities and that's a book uh, book deal yeah. tv even yeah so what's been happening as a result yeah so at about fifty thousand subscribers people were asking me for a book we want a cookbook which really surprised me by the way because i thought I'm already giving you recipes. Why do you want a book? But it's a very different thing. It's very different when they can hold your product in their hands. Mm. It's a lot more intimate that way. So then I started wanting to self-publish, but eventually um, I went to a consulting, a publishing consulting, and the my who the person who is now my agent said, Pylin, this is pitching quality. What you've written, we can pitch a publisher and somebody will publish. And that's what happened. And my book got picked up by Random House Canada. Congrats. Random House Canada. Yeah. Amazing. So proper book deal. Mm -hmm. And then what happened with television as well? Now you're there. Yeah. And now in Canada, we have a show called One World Kitchen, where it's a show that features cuisines from around the world, you know, because we're all about diversity and all of that in Canada right now. And so I was cast to do Thai segment in that show. So we had two seasons of that show that also gave me a lot of credibility for other things, you know, to say that you've been cast for a television show. It, com it, it, it carries a lot of power when you're negotiating brand deals or you're just trying to get another job somewhere, trying to get a speaking gig somewhere. Yeah. That's super powerful. Now you brought up brand deals mm -hmm. and, um, I'm curious, a couple things. One, when was the time when you jumped out to do this full time? I'm really inspired that you do this completely solo. Uh, and you mentioned you have like a friend that helps yeah. kind of behind the cameras, but like you shoot, you edit, you do it by yourself and you have YouTube ads going, but also some brand deals. But I also love what you said about you've had some cool opportunities that really sat right with you, but mm -hmm. you've also said no to deals. Yeah. What advice would you give to uh, influencers watching about brand deals? Brand deals say a lot about your values. Mm who you choose to work with, your audience is going to look at that and equate that brand with your value. So it better line up. So I've made that mistake before where I was greedy, like you're new and you're excited, a brand is, has approached you. And I do it once and then it's like, you know what? I, I don't feel comfortable about, it, about this. It's mm. not perfectly lining up with what I'm trying to advocate, which is like, fresh cooking and things like that. And so I said no the next time somebody comes to me with, you know, a pre-made something or other. And I said, you know what? I'm sure it's a great product, but my channel is not about using pre-made food. It's about making food from scratch. So I will happily work with ingredients. I will happily work with equipment, but pre-made stuff that then, you know, like that's just not my thing. And you're giving up money, but you're, you're not giving up on your integrity. And that's the most important. Again, it's about trust that you build with your viewers. So, so incredible. Well, are you ready for the lightning round? I am now. Awesome. Lightning round, lightning round. Three, two, one. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Always. Always. But first, Start with coffee. One book every influencer watching should read, besides your cookbook, which by the way, we'll throw a link to that in the description below. Pick that up if you want some good Thai food. 
but a book you think that uh, is good for maybe learning some of the skills in this industry? Change Anything. It's, a, it's not particularly to this industry, but it's a book that talks about how do you change a habit. And I think when people work for themselves, you have to have so much discipline and you have to develop such strong habits because you're kind of your own boss, which is a double-edged sword. And this book just talks about really specific ways you can form habits that work for you. Wow, man, I think every influencer should read that. We'll link that up in the description below. Favorite TV show or one of your favorites or Netflix show? Um, favorite TV show? Can it be a YouTube show? Of course. Worth it, BuzzFeed. Worth it, BuzzFeed. <laughs> just so Why do we even ask about TV? <laughs> Cat or dog? Dog. You have a dog? Uh, at home in Thailand, yes, but not in Vancouver. There's no space for dogs. Favorite social network besides YouTube? Instagram. Instagram's where it's at. Yes. Favorite documentary or movie? Um, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Yeah. Beautifully shot, and the story is told in such a compelling way, and it and it's all about passion behind a craft. Mm. And I think if you need a boost in inspiration, watch Jiro Dreams of Sushi, and you're just inspired. Super powerful. Mm. Uh, what's a hidden talent that you have that, that people wouldn't know about? Um, I can sing pretty well, I think. I heard he sang a good song. I heard he had a style. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful. Got the pipes. No miss morning ritual. Something you do every morning. <laughs> Making coffee. Come on, somebody. That's, that deserves oh another one. Oh, my God. Like just if you love coffee, let us know in the comments below if that's one of your no miss morning rituals. If you could give a TED Talk... What would it be on? What would it be about? I would give a talk about not getting held back by the technicalities and just go for it because that has been the theme of my career that has helped me. It's when I started the YouTube channel, I filmed before I knew I had to edit. Yeah. I ended up with footage and then I thought, oh, well, how do I turn this into a video now? But if I had stop to think about that maybe I would never have filmed because I'd be encouraged or intimidated mm. when I wrote my book it was the same thing I don't know how to get a book out there but let me just write it in a word document when I have the book then I'll figure out how to publish it and I think it's helped me to not get bogged down by little things and the fear and the tech I don't know how to do this just do it and we'll figure out later man I yeah. love that I love that <laughs> um, is there a failure or a setback that sets you up for future success in your life? Like if you have a favorite failure that you learned from? A favorite failure that I've learned from? I think not being completely comfortable with my own personality. When I first started my cooking videos, I really wanted to make it perfect. I looked very prim and proper and I wanted to make sure nothing spilled and God forbid I, you know, make a mistake. But now I just kind of roll with it you know, if I spill something, okay. If sometimes, because I don't fill my own kitchen, sometimes I forget to bring something. I roll with it. I said, you know what? I was going to use this, but I forgot to bring it. So this is what we're going to use instead. And it makes it a lot more relatable for people than people are not looking at this extremely perfect cooking video and they think, hey, I can actually do that. Like she makes mistakes. She forgets things. Wow. That's just like me. Yeah. And it's helped me too to be a lot more relaxed when filming. I love that. And that, that kind of shows that authenticity wins, kind mm -hmm. of vulnerability. Nobody's perfect yeah. and relatable really yeah. wins. That's strong. And then favorite place in the entire world and why? <sighs> Gotta say Thailand. Gotta say Bangkok. It's, it's home for me and it's so warm. The food is so good. And just like lots of people that I love, my family's there. And everybody loves Bangkok. Like the people who are watching my show, most of the time they go to Thailand, they fall in love with the place. Now they're back in whatever cold country they are and they want to relive it. So they come to my channel to at least relive the food. So there you go. I Thailand's love that. awesome. I love that. Lightning round. Choo -choo. Choo -choo 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 -choo. There you go. That's the sound lightning makes. For people that want to check you out, uh, where are you at online? We'll, of course, put all the links in the description below. But what do you have going on, your channel names and stuff? Uh, my channel name is Pylin's Kitchen. I got two shows, Hot Thai Kitchen, where I do Thai food. But that's my main thing. And then I also have a second show, Pai's Kitchen, where I do food outside of Thai cuisine. Because, you know, I cook more than just Thai food. And I want to share that with everybody else, too. Well, that's super powerful. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. And I, I really you. just want to acknowledge you for uh, how inspiring you are. Well, thank uh, we you. Talk, we're talking off camera. And I think what a lot of times people don't see is what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that there's 
all these cameras and this footage to edit and all this time and work that goes into it and all this testing and all mm-hmm. these failures and discouragement. It's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's inspiring to see over the last years you've put in that hustle and that it shows that it's possible to really kind of build a life and a business and a career on your own terms doing mm-hmm. something that you love. So Absolutely. thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me. Uh, question of the day, influencers, is what was the biggest takeaway from Pylin um, that you're going to apply? Post that in the comments and remember that it's not never just about getting information, it's about taking action. So I wanna hear what you learn that you're gonna implement on your channel. Pai Lin, give us one final word of encouragement. You probably remember what it's like looking at your views, being, looking at your subscribers, putting out your best video that you thought, but then being like, people didn't appreciate it. Just encouragement for people that are on the journey building their influence online. Mm-hmm. Always keep an open mind. Believe in what you do. Always keep an open mind when people give you suggestions. Um, Of course, not every comment is worth listening to. But if you hear something over and over again, maybe there's something there that you need to think about and improve. Always trying to improve yourself. And as long as you believe in what you do, you love what you do, you'll be fine. Super strong. Thanks Mm -hmm. again for being on the show. You're welcome. Influencer, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Ring the bell. And if you want to check out another video in this interview series, click or tap the screen over there. For another video from Video Influencers, click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, this channel is all about helping you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.